Hey guys, we got an interesting video today. I want to talk a little bit about living cheap and how to live safely living cheap. There's a lot of people that always are talking online about um, how to live cheap here, but they never really tell you all of what you need. They never really tell you all the facts. There's a lot of people here and you see them on here. I can live on, I live on $600 a month or what have you. What they don't tell you, and, and some of them actually have, one of them hinted at it. He says, my budget is $600 per month, okay? And and what he's saying is, he, he's, he's, he's saying that's his budget. Now, my budget is also, my budget is the amount of income that comes in and then I save some of it or what have you. I try to put some money aside and I put that in the budget. Hey, this money's going here, this money's going here, this money's going here, this is going to savings, this is going to whatever. It's, you know, that's how, how you do it. But a lot of people aren't being totally truthful. If you live on a budget of $600 for one month and the next month you're $1,300 and then you're $2,300 or whatever, that's not being truthful, okay? Because a lot of these guys have said, if you listen to them in some of the, some of the cases, that some months they spend more because they're traveling or whatever. If you're sitting at home all month and you're doing absolutely nothing, yeah, you can live on... You could live on six or eight hundred dollars a month or a thousand dollars a month pretty easily, but it's going to be really boring. You're going to be bored as hell. But the keys to living cheap here are this: you're gonna you're gonna be you need insurance, okay? If you don't have insurance and you come over here, and you don't have any money to back you up if you get sick or something like that. You're screwed. You're screwed. You're you're not gonna be able to make it here. You're just, you know, as soon as you get hit with one medical thing, you're done, okay? Because even even for a, a minor day at the hospital or something like that, it can get pretty costly for some of the things over here. Granted, to go see a, a doctor for a medical checkup or something like that is pretty reasonable. In fact, some of the medical doctors in my neighborhood charge $6 to see people. $6. That's a bargain. And you can sit there with, with her for 45 minutes talking to her if, if you want. And, you know, that's 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 a steal in any in any place for to see a, a good medical doctor. But what I want to say is this, is that if you don't have insurance and you don't have some sort of emergency fund, that's the next thing. You need an emergency emergency fund. You need to be able to um, fall back on something if something happens. Uh, but you need to have that insurance. You don't want to use up your emergency fund with a couple of times that you go to the doctors or hospitals. Everybody goes to the doctors or hospitals at least once. Don't think that your health is going to stay perfect and you're just going to drop off dead when you're 90 years old or something like that. A lot of people keep giving me this this thing that well, Steve, Steve, nobody dies dies or gets sick. Nobody dies at, at at age eighty. They die at ninety, and nobody ever gets sick in my family. Well, you know what? Some at some point or, or another, you're gonna start getting sick because usually before you die is when you need to start seeing a doctor. A stroke, heart attack, kidney stones, or something like that. It's it's pretty. It happens over here. And over here, you're more likely to get skin issues, cellulitis, um, um, from, you can get dengue fever or something like that. But cellulitis is actually quite common over here in the Philippines from what I've heard from some of the doctors over here, especially with people that have diabetes and stuff like that. You're just more prone to it. Uh, your, your immune system is, is compromised because you're from over, over, you're from the United States, you're coming into a new country. The first year is rough because of the bacteria and stuff like that. So just, Keep that in the back of your, your mind when you're coming over here. The next thing is this. When you come here, if you really want to survive cheap, is you got to have a cheap mindset about you, that you're going to be able to survive and and you're, you're going to start shopping around more and you got to find a, a cheap place to live that's still decent. And it's a lot of people think, well, Steve, you lucked out. No, it's not that I lucked out. It's, it's that you gotta really seek out a good good place. Some towns are just not great places to live, yet they're cheap, okay? There are places where, you can, like in Tracy, my terrace, there's a lot of places in Tracy that you can, you, can, you can get $60 a month apartments, $80 a month apartments, $100 a month apartments, $120 a month apartments, and you can go to General Trias and you can go over there and you get 400 or 350 for, for a home in a gated community, but again, what are you what are you paying for? You really not, um, you know, you you really don't need all that. You can live in a place like this here, and we have enough neighbors around here that are 
uh, expats and stuff like that. And they they look out for each other. We look out for each other's home and everything. And having cameras around your house, that costs a few bucks to put in. So to keep, but but to get a place like that, you gain three hundred dollars right off right from the get go by living in a place like an apartment complex or whatever. That's the way to go. Like like where we live, these are these are like small apartments. There's four apartments in a row. Um, they're they're sixty to eighty dollars. <clears throat> and there's some some up above here that are brand new that are going to be rented out fairly soon, and those you can grab fairly cheap too. That's where you gain your money. That's where you gain your extra 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 money. And some guys, when when they're on a two thousand dollar a month budget, what they're doing is they're getting the gated community place, and they got to pay the con, uh, condo fees or or homeowners association fees, and that that's where you start paying more, you know, and that. There's a huge difference between four to six hundred dollars a month and sixty, eighty, or a hundred. And for a hundred dollars, sometimes you can get a place with air conditioning and furnished. The place for four hundred might not be furnished. Might maybe it will be. <clears throat> it depends on the, the place that you you're, you're looking at. But when you're out there and you're shopping around, make sure you 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 think ahead and say, well, geez, do I want to spend all my money on the on on rent? Or do I want to spend it on myself so I can go out and live and go places and do stuff with my friends? That money makes a, a substantial difference because there's going to be days where you want to go out and maybe have a steak dinner or go, go for a ride to a town nearby or go swimming someplace or go out with friends or what have you. Or maybe get away for the weekend. And that makes it possible for you to do that, that giving you that extra money. And shop at the food markets. That's the way you survive cheap. Go to the markets and places like that. You know, versus SM or, or, or the, the big supermarkets like Walmart and stuff like that. And look for sales when you do have to shop at those places. Go to get your eggs from a local vendor. Go to get your haircuts from a, 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 a local guy near you versus going to the hair salon or something like that at the mall and paying, paying top dollar for your haircut. It's not needed. You know, um, seek out people to, to get cheaper, cheaper items. That's the way to do things. Maybe you can get your internet through your hotspot on your phone or what have you. There's another way to save a few bucks. All that is all stuff that you can you can use. If you don't use the internet a lot, it might be worth it for you to um, use use a, a data plan or something like that and use the hotspot on your phone. That's a, a really really good way to save money, especially if you if you're just using your your internet for banking or whatever, or to send messages. You know, you can just use your phone or use your hotspot if you need to do some banking or something. That's that's a that's that's a great way to, to save some money because the internet can be expensive. It can be anywhere from a thousand all the way up to, you know, like five thousand for something for some really heavy duty um, internet. You know, and your electric bill, electric bill, you can put a good fan in your house, but a fan is not going to cut it. You really need to have uh, AC in there, and your your AC bill is probably going to be. Um, around 5,000, 6,000 if you have it running 24 hours a day. If you're out during the day and you shut it off, maybe you can get it down to about 4,000 pesos a day. So, I mean, that's where you, you, you get all your savings, guys. That's how you survive in the Philippines on a lower budget. And that's how you can get, you can cut your budget to the lowest point. But you also have to remember in for fees, uh, immigration fees, all that stuff has to be considered when, when you're figuring everything out. Anyway, guys, God bless. Hope you enjoyed that. I hope that helps some of you guys that are thinking of coming over here. Make sure you have an emergency fund. Make sure you have somewhat of a startup fund to buy pots and pans or whatever else you need too if you're going to come over here. Don't think that you're going to come over here and, and just start right off your budget. God bless, guys. Take care.